Hild seated herself on a mound and wept most bitter tears. Presently the wise woman stood again before her and said, Little Two Eyes, why do you weep? Oh, she replied, I must weep. The goat who every day spread my table so beautifully has been killed by my mother, and I shall have again to suffer from hunger and sorrow. Little Two Eyes, said the wise woman, I will give you some good advice. Go home and ask your sister to give you the inside of the slaughtered goat, and then go and bury it in the ground in front of the house door. On saying this, the wise woman vanished. Little Two Eyes went home quickly and said to her sister, Dear sister, give me some part of my poor goat. I don't want anything valuable. Only give me the inside. Her sister laughed and said, Of course you can have that if you don't want anything else. So Little Two Eyes took the inside, and in the evening, when all was quiet, buried it in the ground outside the house door, as the wise woman had told her to do. The next morning, when they all rose and looked out of the window, there stood a most wonderful tree, with leaves of silver and apples of gold hanging between them. Nothing in the wide world could be more beautiful or more costly. They none of them knew how the tree could come there in one night, excepting little Two Eyes. She supposed it had grown up from the inside of the goat, for it stood over where she had buried it in the earth. Then said the mother to little One Eye, Climb up, my child, and break off some of the fruit from the tree. One Eye climbed up, but when she tried to catch a branch and pluck one of the apples, it escaped from her hand. And so it happened every time she made the attempt, and, do what she would, she could not reach one. Three Eyes, said the mother, climb up and try what you can do. Perhaps you will be able to see better with your three eyes than one eye can. One eye slid down from the tree, and three eyes climbed up. But three eyes was not more skillful. With all her efforts, she could not draw the branches nor the fruit near enough to pluck even a leaf, for they sprang back as she put out her hand. At last the mother was impatient, and climbed up herself, but with no more success, for, as she appeared to grasp a branch or fruit, her hand closed upon thin air. "'May I try?' said Little Two Eyes. "'Perhaps I may succeed.' "'You, indeed!' cried her sisters. "'You, with your two eyes, what can you do?' But Two Eyes climbed up, and the golden apples did not fly back from her when she touched them, but almost lay themselves on her hand, and she plucked them one after another till she carried down her own little apron full. The mother took them from her and gave them to her sisters, as she said little Two Eyes did not handle them properly. But this was only from jealousy, because little Two Eyes was the only one who could reach the fruit and she went into the house feeling more spiteful to her than ever. It happened that while all three sisters were standing under the tree together, a young knight rode by. "'Run away quick and hide yourself, little two eyes. Hide yourself somewhere, for we shall be quite ashamed for you to be seen.' They then pushed the poor girl in great haste under an empty cask, which stood near the tree, and several of the golden apples that she had plucked along with her. As the night came nearer, they saw he was a handsome man, and presently he halted, and looked with wonder and pleasure at the beautiful tree, with its silver leaves and golden fruit. At last he spoke to the sisters, and asked, "'To whom does this beautiful tree belong?' If a man possessed only one branch, he might obtain all he wished for in the world. This tree belongs to us, said the two sisters, and we will break off a branch for you if you like. 
they gave themselves a great deal of trouble in trying to do as they offered but all to no purpose for the branches and the fruit evaded their efforts and sprung back at every touch this is wonderful exclaimed the knight that the tree should belong to you and yet you are not able to gather even a branch they persisted however in declaring that the tree was their own property at this moment little two-eyes who was angry because her sisters had not told the truth caused two of the golden apples to slip out from under the cask and they rolled on till they reached the feet of the knight's horse when he saw them he asked in astonishment where they came from the two ugly maidens replied that they had another sister but they dared not let him see her for she had only two eyes like common people and was named little two eyes but the knight felt very anxious to see her and called out little two eyes come here then came two eyes quite comforted from the empty cask and the knight was astonished to find her so beautiful then he said little two eyes can you break off a branch of the tree for me oh yes she replied i can very easily for the tree belongs to me as she climbed up and without any trouble broke off a branch with its silver leaves and golden fruit and gave it to the knight he looked down at her as she stood by his horse and said little two eyes what shall i give you for this ah she answered i suffer from hunger and thirst in sorrow and trouble from early morning till late at night if you would only take me with you and release me i should be so happy then the knight lifted the little maiden on his horse and rode home with her to his father's castle there she was given beautiful clothes to wear and as much to eat and drink as she wished and as she grew up the young knight loved her so dearly that they were married with great rejoicings now when the two sisters saw little two eyes carried away by the handsome young knight they were overjoyed at their good fortune the wonderful tree belongs to us now they said even if we can't break off a branch yet everybody who passes will stop to admire it and make acquaintance with us and who knows we may get husbands after all but when they rose the next morning lo the tree had vanished and with it all their hopes and on this very morning when little two eyes looked out of her chamber window of the castle she saw to her great joy that the tree had followed her little two eyes lived for a long time in great happiness but she heard nothing of her sisters till one day two poor women came to the castle to beg for alms little two eyes saw them and looking earnestly in their faces she recognized her two sisters who had become so poor that they were obliged to beg their bread from door to door but the good sister received them most kindly and promised to take care of them and give them all they wanted and then they did indeed repent and feel sorry for having treated her so badly in their youth